Well, let's take a look at question seven. So question seven, uh, this gives us uh, a circuit with inductor, capacitor, and a couple of resistors in there. Uh, and because we don't really know how these interact yet, uh, so for test two, you can just kind of assume that you can just know from this that it's going to be a little bit of like a steady state problem. Uh, and they want us to find V of X. So V of X is right there uh, after nine time constants. So they give us time is equal to nine tau. And we know that nine tau is greater than or equal to five tau. So therefore time is at infinity. So this is acting in steady state. So the, they kind of tell you that it's acting in steady state without explicitly saying, hey, this is in steady state. Okay? Because initially, so before this switch, the switch right here is open. And then as time goes to infinity, it's closed. Okay. Uh, and we can kind of see that, like, this looks like the exact same problem. As a matter of fact, this is the exact same problem um, as earlier. So this is kind of just like a simplified version of that problem. So if we, so this is the time is equal to zero circuit. But if we go and draw the uh, times equal to infinity circuit, let's draw that out. So plus minus, make it a little bit better than that. Okay. We have five, five, uh, and then this is that switch. This is ten volts. Where this is where our inductor was, this is where our capacitor was, and there's that quick uh, review uh, from the previous problem. Uh, assuming if you've watched these in order, like you, you see me kind of explain this, but I'll just do a quick overview. Uh, so if there's current running through. Then as time goes to infinity, capacitor acts like a broken out wire. The inductor acts just like a regular wire. You can go back and watch the uh, previous video for the uh, full explanation for that. But anyway, so here we have the plus minus V of X, they call it now. Uh, but once we close this uh, switch up here, that'll allow a current to be induced. So current goes that way, that way. Can't go down an open wire, so it'll bypass these two. And just allows this current to travel. So that current there. Uh, and like before, we can uh, do one of two methods. Uh, it's up to you which one you want to do. Uh, so from there to there, that is V of X, and then from there to there, that is also V of X, because they're in parallel, they're going to have the same voltage drop. So uh, method one, the one I would recommend, is the voltage division, which would be... Uh, Call it VR5 is equal to resistance 5 over R equivalent times VS. Because they're in series, that big loop is a series, you can do this. Uh, so we have 5 over 5 plus 5 times 10 volts, which will give us 5 volts for V of X, which is equal to VR5. Uh, draw a quick little box.
box around that one. Uh, method two, you can find current. So if you want to do that, uh, current would be equal to V over our equivalent, which would just be 10 volts, five plus five ohms, so one amp. Therefore, the voltage across VR5 would be current through R5, 1 amp, 5 ohms, 5 volts for V of X, which is also equal to VR5. And that's the same value that we get up here. So either method works uh, up to you what you want to do. But uh, 